No, a fixed mindset, you can't accomplish anything. No. Okay, I'm, I wasn't I very successful that night. either. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. You're not wrong. You're just calling me out. Justin Ebert, this is Dr. Hugh Beatty, and this is Limitless Longevity. We want to thank you for joining us today, and we're talking about that mindset shift that at least a lot of us have to go, but as you saw in the intro, maybe not all of us. So, really quickly, if you're new to the conversation, a fixed mindset would say something like, you have natural skills and abilities, and whatever those are, that's your cap, that's your limit. So, a fixed mindset person would say something like, well, I've, I've never been good at math, and I can't be good at math. Right. Contrast that to the growth mindset that says, I can acquire new skills, my brain is, is strong, it's adaptable, it's resilient, I'm not good at math, but it's because I haven't applied myself, but I know if I did, I could actually get good at something. And translate that to math, to learning a new language, to running a business, whatever that is, Dr. Beatty, you haven't struggled with that. Tell us <laughs> your growth mindset strategy. Well, as I was saying, I've never had a fixed mindset yeah. from what I can remember, so I was kind of shocked when you were saying that you struggled with that. But I always had a growth mindset. Like even in my practice, a growth mindset. What else can I learn? What else can I do? The possibilities that are out there. Like the other day, I, was, I posted something on Facebook talking about what you don't know. Yeah. And, and so when you constantly want to learn, you can't stand that fixed mindset. You can. And part of that, I think, is maybe just the environment that we grow up in. Right? I'm not good at this, or maybe we have parents tell us that, hey, you're always going to be like this because our, our family has always just been that way. I'm sure you see that in your practice, right? right. We're all overweight because everybody in your family has always been overweight. And if you have the fixed mindset, right. that's what you're going to believe. Right. And yet if you have the growth mindset, you can change that story and the narrative and the trajectory of your life. Yeah, and it's true because I know I've had patients that come in and they have the attitude that, you know, there's a certain disease in their family that they feel that they're going to have a predisposition to. And I say, well, let's change that. I'm constantly mm. telling them about the importance about the environment you put your genes in. Yep. And so I'm trying to constantly change that. In fact, a, a patient came today and she was all excited because she finally did the wellness consultation. And so I had been giving her tidbits here and there trying to get her to understand the importance of wellness. After the consultation, the light bulb went off. She was mm. so excited. She even gave me a high five. She's never done that. Yeah, so I guess I changed her fixed mindset. <laughs> Absolutely. And maybe, uh, you know, I like that uh, idea that people would come in maybe with the predisposition for a disease, right. which is probably true, but that doesn't mean it's a guarantee. Yes. You have the power to control yes. the, the trajectory of your life, and that's really what do you think your body, your mind, your spirit is capable of? Oh, yeah. That's all about growth. Yeah. And the mind is so powerful that you can actually make yourself sick by how you think. You yep. can make yourself healthy by how you think. There's a lot of um, uh, stories out there that you can find where people have healed themselves by changing their how they view themselves. Absolutely. I, I actually make that a regular practice. Mm -hmm. When I start to feel like, oh, no, I think I feel a cold coming on, for about a half a second, I think, oh, I'm going to be sick tomorrow. And then I instantly say, no, I'm not. I'm strong. I'm healthy. I'm resilient. I feel great. My body feels good. I'm well hydrated. I'm strong. I have plenty of sleep. Mm -hmm. And I can't tell you the last time I had any sort of like, everybody wants to make jokes about those man colds and how it debilitates us for days. I can't oh, yeah. tell you the last time I have felt under, under the weather for more than about a half a day. Oh, that's because great. part of what I do is as soon as I feel something coming on, I'm strong, I'm healthy, I'm resilient, my body's fighting this, I'm going to be better. And it tends to work out. Yeah. And that could be a placebo effect too. But the power of placebo, in fact, whenever they do a study and they do placebos, they know a certain amount of those people who take the placebo are going to get well because the power of the mind. They say, yeah. this pill is going to help me. So, Yeah. And that really, that power of the mind is one of those things. That's what we were laughing about <laughs> off camera when, when we started to film. I really struggled with that early on. I mean, I, yeah. as the coach, it's, it's almost the irony, but I think it's the thing that, that has made me so successful. Right is because I, I've had to work through that problem myself. I grew up with the, my brother is, is the smart one. He's always been in the gifted program. He got 4.0 in his doctoral program. Like, I have to work hard. I can't be smart. But all of a sudden, I started to work and apply and realize, look at all the things that I have acquired over my life. Right. And I started to, to, through maybe the stubbornness of accomplishment, 
realize just how capable I was. And that story started to shift and it led to a lot of break, breakthroughs that, I, that I'm sure you see on a daily basis in health. Oh, yeah. When they finally get it, it's a beautiful thing to watch. Yeah. And the reason why I was so shocked because Justin, the only period of time I've known you in the last few years, <laughs> you're not a fixed mindset yeah, I, kind I'm of not guy. Now. It was unbelievable. So you actually fell forward. You accomplished great things. Quite, quite <laughs> quickly. Uh, if anything... What I've realized is that sometimes the best path, most of the time, the best path to success is to yeah. fail. Oh, yeah. And I hate failing, so I want to get it over with as quickly as possible. Oh, yeah. So if anything, that maybe makes me more uh, prone to risk now. Like, I used to be extremely risk-averse because I thought that failure was like this final pronouncement because I had oh, the yeah. fixed mindset. If I tried once and I failed, I must mm -hmm. not be any good at it, and I would quit. Mm -hmm. Now I say, I tried it, I didn't succeed, but I learned something how can I quick, fail more quickly because I want to get to that oh, success? Yeah, yeah. And in fact, I just had this thought that a fixed mindset, I view it as a closed mindset. Yeah. Because then you're closed to new opportunities. You say, no, I can't accomplish that. No, I can't do this. And there's times over that I look back on over the years that I did have a closed mindset in certain things. That I didn't pursue certain things because I said, you know what, either I didn't want to take the time or I didn't feel there was something I could accomplish you know, in a certain period of time. And so now I have the attitude that, look, let's pursue these things. Time for me is getting shorter because yeah. I am older, okay? And I'm trying to say, what are the things I want to do? So let's go out and accomplish those great things now. Because that can be a legacy too. So, so often we think about legacy only means what our pro progenitors are and stuff like that, yeah. what, what our legacy is in our, our children. But it can also be in what? What we leave behind. What we leave behind. What we actually accomplish. What what type of things we built. Absolutely, and that is one of the cornerstone foundations of the way I end coaching with clients is we always talk about what it means to leave a legacy. And that yes. is not how many kids you have, it is what are you leaving that's tangible here, oh, yeah. the sign that you were here on earth. Oh, yeah. Whether that is you, you run for, for mayor or you get a park named after you or you donate mm -hmm. to your local library or you build the new wing of your church, like mm -hmm. you get to determine what lives on after you. Mm -hmm. But capturing that narrative only happens when you become committed to your own growth. Yes. You can't do that from a fixed mindset. You can't be closed. You've got to be open to those opportunities, yeah. to failures, and to seeking out those new chances to learn. Right. Thank you for joining us on this episode of Limitless Longevity. This is Dr. Beatty. I'm Justin Hebert. We will see you on a future episode.